All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to give you a very gentle introduction to the notion of convolution, which is a very important way to multiply functions in analysis. So here's the setting. Suppose you're given functions f of x and g of x in Rn, then what you would like to do, you would like to multiply those two functions, but in a way that is useful uh, for analysis questions. And in fact, there is such a way, and that's called the convolution, which is just defined as follows, f star g of x, it's simply the integral over whatever your space is, in this case over Rn, of f of x minus y, g of y, dy, which it turns out with a change of variables is actually the same as the integral over Rn of f of y, g of x minus y, dy. And how in the world do you remember that? Well, for me, what's easiest to figure out is simply notice the sum of the two is just x. Because if you sum x minus y with y, that gives you x. And same thing here. If you sum y with x minus y, that also gives you x. So it can't be something like uh, y minus x and then y. That doesn't make sense. And by the way, I have done another video showing that it actually corresponds to multiplication, but today is more about an example and applications. So for instance, consider the following. So for instance, in R, for n equals one, consider here f of x being just the indicator function of zero comma one, which is just the function that is one on the interval zero comma one and zero elsewhere. which if you want, just looks as follows. So let me use my ruler. Da, da, da. Ah, beautiful. So again, if you're on the interval zero comma one, it is one. So it might look something like that. Da, da, da. <laughs> Good. So here it is one and then elsewhere it is zero. So like this da, 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 and like that. And it works, very happy. Um, and like that. So this is F and then on the other hand, consider G to just be, I believe, E to the X. G to the X equals E to the X, which again, it just looks like that whoosh e to the x. And the question is, what is f convolved with g? And I really want to emphasize, even though we're integrating with respect to y, the resulting function is a function and with respect to x. So let's calculate f convolved with g of x. And again, by definition, that is the integral over r. So the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x g of, um, sorry, f of y, g of x minus y. dy. So again, make sure, I didn't check this, but make sure the sum is x. So it makes sense, y plus x minus y is x. And then uh, just use a definition. So it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the indicator function from zero, one of y, and then g, of, g is just e to the x minus y dy. And then remember the indicator function, it's zero. Outside, well, I love this. It's zero outside of zero comma one. So it's basically y is just between zero and one. So this becomes an integral let's see, from zero to one of, so this just becomes a function one. So this just becomes e to the x minus y dy. And notice the e to the x part 
doesn't depend on y at all. So it just comes out here and you end up with getting e to the x times the integral from zero to one of e to the minus y dy, which you can calculate and you get e to the x, then uh, you calculate the antiderivative, which is e to the minus y over minus one from zero to one, and you end up getting e to the x, and I believe minus e to the minus one, so minus one over e plus one, and again, uh, you can simplify this if you want, so e to the x times minus one over e plus e, so simply uh, minus one plus e over e, and that becomes e to the x, e minus one over e. Lots of e's. You see, the point is, this thing is actually a function of x, of x. So it does make sense to say f star g of x. And again, what this is, is just a way of um, multiplying, if you want, two functions. And again, this has some very nice properties. So in fact, if you're taking Fourier series, what's nice are oh, Fourier transforms. What's nice is that the Fourier transform of f star g becomes maybe some multiple of f times g. So the Fourier transform multi turns convolution into multiplication. But here, why I'm interested in it, it's because it's useful in partial differential equations. For instance, if you're trying to solve Laplace's equation, so minus partial u equals zero, then remember one solution is given by the fundamental solution phi of x, which is some constant over x to the n minus two, if n is bigger than two. And the question is then, how would you solve Poisson's equation? So minus Laplace of u equals f. Actually very easy. You just take the fundamental solution and multiply it by f, which here is simply the convolution. Another reason why it's useful if you're taking the heat equation, ut equals Laplace of u, then again, you have a fundamental solution. And this, I think I remember because I, it was on my qual. So one over, I think, of four pi t to the n minus two e to the minus x squared over four t something like that. Anyway, the sizzling Gaussian distribution. And the question is now, how would you solve ut equals Laplace of u, but with the initial condition, g of x? Very easy. You just convolve u with that initial condition. So here, or you convolve phi with the initial condition, so your solution would be given by the integral of rn of basically um, u convol phi convolved with g, which is simply phi of x minus y comma t, g of y dy. And even better, how would you solve the heat equation, the inhomogeneous heat equation? So ut equals Laplace of your f of x t and Again, let's see, with, let's do it with initial conditions. Why not? So just to be super fancy, then your solution is given by this thing above. So integral of Rn, phi of x minus y comma t, g of y dy, plus the full convolution. So phi convolved with f, so really integral from zero to t, integral over Rn, of phi of x minus y t minus s y ds. And again, make sure that the sum here is x and the sum here is t. It is the full convolution. Um, 
And last but not least, I do want to show you a really, really, really cool demo I found in case you want to know more about what convolution looks like. So again, uh, this is the one I found. Hopefully you can see this. But here we have the triangle, you know, the, the plug string function for the wave equation. And here we have just the indicator function like before. And the question is, what does this look like at the end? Well, let's see what happens if they meet the perfect date, a P, P date, PDE date. Okay, let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. So you see the convolution is this smooth thing. So it is actually very smooth. And in fact, the convolution of F and G is always smoother than either F and G. And this will be also very important when we, um, it's called, uh, this is very important when we'll talk about mollifiers. That's also a very cool application, but that's for another day. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.